Hi everyone, my name is Evelyn. We're gonna be talking today about our Vida Latina Manos a la Obra program, Papel. Uh, I'm really excited to be talking to you about our crafts that we'll be working on today. If you didn't pick up one of these packets, don't worry, you can find all your supplies at home out at your closest store. The packet should include some instructions of the crafts we'll be working on today. And then as well, a brief history of Papel Picado and the paper flowers. And then my favorite part, a coloring page where you can color that, hang that up, and a little word search. Okay, so I'm gonna get started. Um, we're gonna be talking, uh, I'll be working specifically on these paper flowers. Maria, who you'll be seeing next, will be working on the papel picado, and then Sheridan will finish us off with the ratones voladores, okay? So, papel picado, um, it's very popular in the Mac the Hispanic culture, um, as well as we use it for decorating, for parties, for churches. It, it's been, it was brought into Mexico City, and so we've really adopted that into our culture. Um, personally, I had these decorations all over for my quinceañera. We had strings of paper flowers just like these. My quinceañera dress was purple, so they were all purple and it looked really beautiful. Um, I really was proud to have that part of my quinceañera. Um, and then I'll share with you how we can make these different colors. We have a lot of samples here. You'll see they're all a little different. Um, some of them have their a little pointier or rounder. Um, some are smaller, those are so cute. Um, and then some have different you know, color coordination. And you can definitely do this at the start. So this is when you start to choose, how do you want your paper flower to look like? And I really like a lot of same colors, so pinks. I'm gonna do some pinks. And I might throw a purple in there. I'm feeling a little, like I wanna add some color in today. Let's see, let me put these aside. So we're gonna make sure these are aligned nicely. And then we're gonna get our scissors cut straight down the middle. Okay, we're gonna stack those on top. And then we're going to fold these accordion style. So I'll just be going back and forth until I reach the end. So you should have something looking like this. And I'm going to grab one of our pipe cleaners. I'm going to grab the pink one so it can match. And you're simply going to make sure you have a little extra on this end so that you can pull it in and twist. Make it a little longer. And then we're just going to twist. It's up to you if you want, and make sure it's centered. So I'm gonna pull this down a little because it's not too centered for me. There we go. Okay. And it's up to you if you wanna keep this on there, cut it off right here. Um, the back parts, we cut it off so that it could be strung up, but I'm gonna leave it for now. Now, this is really where you start to shape your flower. Do you want it to have kind of like a pointy part, or you want it round or curved. I'm going to try to do a kind of a curve. So you'll just cut the ends and I'm going to curve those. Nice. I'm going to match that to the other side. So now we're going to open this up. You can kind of see the flower start to form here. I love these colors. I also made, oops, I made a blue one earlier. And this one I threw in some green yellow colors. I really love the patterns, but you can also do them solid. That looks beautiful as well. So I'm going to open both sides up. This looks cute too. And this is, I think this is the hardest part of the paper flower because we have to be very patient during this part. We're going to pull up each layer of the um, papel and then that you have to be very careful. That way you don't end up accidentally ripping it. So 
I'm going to start my way from the top. And you just pull. So we got the first one. And then you're gonna pull the next one. And you're going to do that all the way through. Also pulling from the bottom. Ooh, it's really starting to form. Now, I just did one half right now. I'm gonna continue on the other half. So you can really see it fills up nicely. And take your time because you will accidentally rip it, rip one of these layers. If you do, no biggie. You most likely won't be able to tell because it's so fluffy here. Okay, now I have some stuck together. There we go. Okay. Look at these colors, they're so nice together. I really think this came out really good. Now you have this other end, if you'd like, you could maybe wrap this around a string and hang it, maybe cut it off, maybe even make it into a bracelet. That would look super nice. You have lots of um, opportunities to make this your own gift to someone. These flowers will never die. They will last you a long time and they're great decorations for any room, any desk, any area in your home. I hope you enjoyed making this with me. Next, Maria will be talking about our papel picado. Thank you. Hi everyone, I'm Maria and today I'm going to show you how to make the papel picado. So we're going to use our tissue paper. We'll need some scissors, string if you would like to hang it up like we have back here and also some tape. So we're going to use the instructions that came in your bag. Okay, so our first step is to grab our papel and we are going to fold it lengthwise into fourths, okay? So here I'm using two papers. I just want to make two at the same time. So we're going to fold that in half. Like that. And we're going to fold it one more time. Okay, so now it should be into fourths. For our next step, we're also going to fold it this part into half. Okay, so now we should have eight different layers. So for our third part, we're going to cut out the designs from the side and bottom edges. And we want to leave some room at the top part so that if you would like to hang it um, there will be some space for us to do that if not if we don't leave any space it might look a little like this and so we might have a hard time taping it onto our string okay so what i'm going to do is on one edge i'm going to make it round Okay, so it'll look a little like this, and you can make any shape you want. If you want to make it pointy, you can go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Alright, so now I'm going to fold it back again, and I am going to make some triangles. Okay, so we have one triangle here. Now I'm going to make another half circle. OK, 
Okay. All right, and be careful not to get close to the edge of that top part. So now on my other side, I'm gonna make small, a little small rectangle. And you can really do any shape that you want. Um, back here, we have some different designs as well. So. Okay, and if you wanna get uh, in the middle of the tissue paper, you can go ahead and gently fold that in so that you can have a little design in the middle there too. So another half circle and just be aware that right on this side I have a lot more room for the paper but on the other side I made some other cuts so it might not show up on both sides. So if that's the case you can fold it over like this all right, so once you're finished making all the cuts on your paper, you can go ahead and unfold it. Okay, and this one, I made it long ways, and now we have two in different colors. All right, so for the next part, you're going to make Ratones Voladores with Sheridan. Hi everybody, my name is Sheridan. Today I'm going to show you how to make some Ratones Voladores as part of our Manos a la Obra Papel Craft. Uh, the instructions are in your craft kit that if you uh, picked up at the library, you should have these instructions. Otherwise, they're going to be in the description of the video below as well, okay? So we're going to make the Ratones Voladores. For this, um, it's not really a paper craft per se, it's more of a toy. You'll see when you're done with the Ratones Voladores that you have this little thing that you can then swing around. Um, they're pretty fun to play with, you know, you can run around all over the place with them, and then once you're done playing, you actually have a little piece of candy to eat. Pretty cool. So let's make them. You're gonna need some scissors, some of the candies which we put in your kit. Um, if you didn't pick up a kit, you're gonna need a candy that has the little ball in the middle and twist tied ends, just like this. So a butterscotch candy or something like that would work. A Tootsie Roll even would work. You're gonna need some string and some of the big tissue paper pieces that were in your kit, okay? So first steps, let's measure out some string. You're gonna need um, about an arm's length. So you're gonna take the string, pull it all the way to the end of your arm like this, and then that's where you're gonna make the cut. So you have your string. The excess string you can put aside either to hang up your papel picado or to make some more of these ratones voladores. Next up, you're going to need your tissue paper. So what you're going to do with the tissue paper is you have a really big long sheet. You're going to fold this sheet in half the long way, just like that. And then you're going to fold it in half one more time so that you have a strip of tissue paper that's folded in half twice to make four layers. Then you're going to cut a thin strip of paper from the end of the sheet, just like this, okay? So I'm going to cut all the way to the end to just make myself a nice strip of tissue paper. This you can unfold at this point. And then this, is, this part gets a little tricky, so uh, parents, you may need to help out with this part, or even uh, older kids, if you have a younger sibling, help them out with this part, okay? Because this is kind of the assembly portion. So now that we have our tissue paper, what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay it out on the table. We're gonna take our string, and we're gonna lay that out on the table, and we're gonna kind of fold it, so you can see that we're gonna fold it so that I have like an L shape of string like this. Lay that on the table, put your tissue paper over the string, place your candy onto the end of the tissue paper. So now I have the candy, the tissue paper under that, and the string under that. And then very carefully take the string with the end of it and tie a knot. 
just a simple knot would work. You don't need anything super fancy, but make sure that you catch the very end of the candy and the tissue paper within the knot itself. So I'll show you what I mean. It's a little fiddly, but what you're looking for is a knot. As you can see here, I've got the candy itself, the knot is here, the end of the wrapper of the candy is poking out, and the tissue paper is also tied up. Okay? So as you can see, that holds the tissue paper to the candy. But we can't swing this around just yet because the weight is off. I've got the knot on one side of the candy, the other side of the candy is up here, and I've got all this string left. Next up, what I'm going to do is, without cutting the string or anything, I'm going to pull it up to the other side of the candy and tie another knot up there. So what I did is I pulled it up, I, I put my finger here, I pulled it up, tied it around the little wrapper, and then just looped it through where I had just left a little gap with my finger. So as you can see, I've got the knot there, I'm pulling the string through, and then you just want to pull it nice and tight. So now I've got my candy here, a knot on this side, a knot on this side, and the tissue paper string. And now what you can do is just play around with it. So you can take these ratones voladores, which means flying mice, go run around outside, be sure to wear your mask, um, go at the park, you know, just kind of run around, play around with them. You can make a bunch of them and bring some to your friends for a party. Um, and then once you're done playing, you can actually just eat the candy that was inside your raton volador. Hopefully that was a pretty good description. If you need it's a little bit of extra time, feel free to rewind the video, pause when you need a little bit of extra time to catch up, and you should be good with your raton volador. Don't forget also to join us for our next Manos a la Obra craft um, as part of our Vida Latina series. That one is gonna be aired on October 29th, which is a Thursday at 4 p.m. We're gonna be making mini altares for El Dia de los Muertos. Um, and the craft kits for those are gonna be available at the Michelle Obama Library, the Mark Twain Library, and the main library starting October 17th, which is a Saturday. Okay, we'll see you then.